This slide shows the formulas used to check for the shear resistance of a pad foundations. There are three types of the shear failure for a typical pad foundations, which include the vertical shear at 1D from the column face, punching shear at perimeter 2D from the column face, and also punching shear at column perimeter. Let us look into different types of shear one by one. For the vertical shear at 1D from the column face, the critical shear plan is indicated here, which is at the positions of 1 times the depth of the foundations from the column face. The shear loads acting on the member will be determined by the bearing pressure generated by the soil at these regions to be multiplied with this area. That gives you your VED. This VED is to be checked against the shear resistance of the concrete, which will be the larger value of these two. Let us look into the minimum shear resistance of the concrete as given in this formula. The care here is determined from this formula, which is in the functions of the depth of the section. The value care needs to be less than 2.0. Since that we are talking about this critical shear plan, the BD here will be the sectional area of this plan. This length will be the BW and D will represent the depth of the pad 14. Next, we look into the shear resistance of the concrete. It is given by this formula. The K here is the same formula as given here. And the BW here is actually the same BW here. There is an additional consideration in terms of the amount of reinforcement bar provided. The AS here is the provided reinforcement bar over the critical shear plan here. And this row 1 needs to be less than 0 0.02. The larger value of the 2 will be the shear resistance and your shear resistance needs to be greater than the shear load acting on the member. Now let us look at the punching shear stress at 2D from the column surface. First, you will need to draw a perimeter line at 2D distance from the column surface. Calculate the total area beyond the boundary of the perimeter length. This area is to be multiplied with the bearing pressure of the soil in order for you to determine the shear force acting on the member. The shear force here is later converted into the shear stress by dividing the VED with the UD. The U here represents the perimeter length for the offset distance of 2D from the column surface. And the D here represents the depth of the pad 14. Therefore, this formula is actually used to quantify the shear stress acting on the member along the perimeters of 2D from the column surface. There is a factor of beta here, which take into consideration of the moment acting on the foundations as a result of the bending moment by the columns. For the foundations having pure axial load, the beta will be equals to 1, as the bending moment MED here is equals to 0. In the case that there are bending moments at the column, 
you will need to consider this function here in order to compute the beta and you will expect the beta due to the moment will be greater than 1.0 the MED here represent the moments from the columns decay here is determined by the ratio of C1 and C2 due to the columns this diagram shows you the C1 and C2 C1 represents the width of the columns in the directions of the moment rotations while C2 represents the width of the columns perpendicular to the directions of the moment due to the column the U here is the parameters of 2D from the 2D offset distance from the column surface and you will need to compute this W1 by using this formula which constitute of C1, C2, D once you have computed the beta you are able to define the shear stress acting on the parameters of 2D from the column surface. This shear stress is to be checked against the shear resistance of the concrete. It is defined by the minimum shear resistance of the concrete divided by the UD. The formulas for the minimum shear resistance of the concrete is the same here. Now we look into the punching shear stress at the column perimeter, as indicated by the diagram here. Your VED here will be the axial force caused by the columns acting on the pad footing. It is to be divided by the U0 D, where U0 is the parameters of the column surface here, as the summations of 2H and 2B. What you see here is this formula is very identical to this formula, except that this U0 is different with the U here. The U here represents the parameters at 2D from the column surface, while the U0 represents the parameter of the columns. And this formula is used to determine the shear stress due to the load. Again, there is a factor beta. If there is no moment acting on the column, the beta will be equals to 1.0 in the existence of the moment the beta will become more than 1.0 the formulas to determine the beta is given here which is exactly the same structures as for this formula now the difference will be the u0 and the w1 U0 represent the parameters of the column surface while W1 is given by this formula. They are C1 and C2 in the formula as demonstrated in the figure here. The K here is also determined from the table of C1 per C2 and you know that these two are actually referring to the same table having the shear stress load defined it is to be checked against the shear resistance of the pad foundations this can be obtained from this formula the factor alpha AA is equal to 1.0 while the gamma C which is the partial factor of safety of concrete will be 1.5 in fact this formula is actually derived from the shear load here as given in Eurocode 3.1.6 and Eurocode 6.2.2
the shear loads is given in this formula where the factors of shear is given here and the design stress of the concrete is given here. Substituting all this into the formula, you get the shear load. As we are comparing the resistance in terms of the shear resistance stress and also shear stress, the shear loads needs to be converted into the shear stress through divisions of the B and D. That gives you this formula. If you find this difficult to understand, you may just adopt these formulas for the design.